the way that I like to explain things to players here is how can we put you in a position to actually feel what you want to do and learning how to move and do it the right way as opposed to just thinking about it. Because I can tell you for the first 20 plus years of my life, I thought I was leading with my hips and I was leading with early extension, stand up and tilting. But I would have told you, if, you'd, if you wouldn't have had me on video, I'd have said, yeah, I'm turning there. Yeah. And so again, my first time when I first started learning how to rotate and stay in posture, I felt like I was gonna eat grass the first time I did it. So yeah. it was like, wow, the difference in the feel versus the real here is pretty crazy. So that's what I like to do with players. All right, guys, so you saw me speak in a previous video about one of my favorite golf accessories, the Groovit brush. One of the few things that I really love. I've got in my own golf bag I've been using for over a year now to clean your grooves. It's so darn important when you go out and play. And not only does Groovit have the original brush here that I've been using, but they also sent me a Mini G brush here. So they call it the Mini G Dry Scrubber. So it's the same concept as the bigger version, but what's really cool about this, it's so small, is you could clip it right onto your bed. Belt. The convenience of this on your belt is you don't even need to walk back to your bag to be able to clean your clubs. You simply have it right there. Let me show you how it works. If I'm out here hitting the shot, a little nine iron, take my divot, come back. Obviously, I've got a little dirt on there. I'm going to pop this off, a couple of clean, clean the grooves like that, pop that right back on, and I'm ready for my next golf ball. So clean each shot after you hit. You're going to absolutely love the groove. It so if you're a golfer and you don't have one, I would grab one for yourself. In fact, I'd grab a couple. They're so affordable. I'd grab a couple for your friends. You have family that play. It would be a nice Christmas gift. We're going to put a link down below. I want you to click that link. Grab a couple of these. You're going to thank me later. You're absolutely going to love it. All right, guys, in today's video, we're talking about how to lead with your hips in the downswing. We're going to go over one of my favorite ways that I've seen Trevor coach players to do this. Simple drills and feels for you to be able to use to be able to lead with your lower body. If you're someone that can't get that lower body moving, you have too much upper body, you struggle with inconsistency, today's video is really going to help you. A couple of subtle nuances from the drills um, that we've done uh, that Trevor's going to show us that, that are really going to help. Obviously, Mr. Trevor Salzman to my right. Appreciate you as always. Always, always good to be here, buddy. Um, so Trevor, let's talk through uh, leading with the hips, <clears throat> specifically during the downswing. What some of the feels that we want to use to create separation, yep. right? Some of the drills are, and then we'll kind of talk our way through how they can use this in their own game. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, number one, I guess the question would be is like, why do we want to lead with the hips? Well, the number one reason we want to lead with the hips is so that we sequence things the right way, okay? So the hips can start to accelerate. They give a little boost to the rib cage. That gives it a little bit of a boost to the shoulders, which then that's going to boost the, the speed that we can create from the arms and the golf club right there, okay? Mm. So it's, it's a sequential thing. That would be our reasoning for wanting to do something like that. So I think, again, the way that I like to explain things to players here is how can we put you in a position to actually feel what you want to do and learning how to move and do it the right way as opposed to just thinking about it? Because mm -hmm. I can tell you for the first 20 plus years of my life, I thought I was leading with my hips and I was leading with early extension, stand up and tilting. But I would have <laughs> told you if, you'd, if you wouldn't have had me on video, I'd said, yeah, I'm turning there. Yeah. And so again, my first time when I first started learning how to rotate and stay in posture, I felt like I was gonna eat grass the first time I did it. So yeah. it was like, wow, the difference in the feel versus the real here is pretty crazy. So that's what I like to do with players. So like one of the most simplistic ways of doing this is if you go to impact right here, and again, this is an important piece of it. Start with a little bit of pressure forward. So again, we're moving our pressure forward that's getting our center points in front of the golf ball. The next thing that I would say is if you hold your lead shoulder in place, this is what allows us to combine our linear movement with our rotation, mm. which would basically be the separation in the pelvis from the rib cage and then the shoulders right there. That is also, if you watch this from face on, that is what's putting me into lateral flexion on my trail side when I hold my shoulder in place. If I just turned everything, my head's going to start to go mm. forward with it. And this is going to be an irrelevant drill for you. So hold the shoulder in place, place the pelvis a little bit forward. So this would be our linear movement. This would be our rotational movement right here. And I'll tell you a big piece of this for everybody right here. Really feel like you actually have an awareness 
and you have a connection to the ground right here. Yeah? So don't just spin out of it like this to where we don't feel any ground pressure because if we don't have that ground pressure, we're not gonna have the stability to be able to time the delivery of the golf club right there. So my thing right here is I go pressure forward. I feel like I am gripping the ground right here. I'm going to hold my shoulder. I'm going to rotate the pelvis to a 45 degree, which is now lengthening my lead side rib cage and oblique. It is bending my trail side. And this is giving me a feel of what it's like to be able to separate. Mm. Then from in there, if you're videoing yourself, I think it's important to put some visual cues in there so that you can actually see, are you separating? If I would have known this 20 some years ago, I might not be teaching golf today. I might be doing something yeah. a little different because <laughs> I thought I was turning, I'm yeah. early extending, so. Luckily for us, maybe that didn't happen. I'm so glad I'm doing what I'm doing, if I'm being honest. Now, Trevor, I know you add the um, antenna or the alignment rod in the belt loops yep. as one of the visuals that you're mentioning. Can Absolutely. You show, yeah, can you show us what that looks like? So this would be this would be this really expensive training aid here, which is an antenna <laughs> that I would put in my belt loop right in here. So I would throw this guy through here. So now I've got a visual cue from a down the line. And they could use the antenna, they could use a you alignment could use an rod. alignment stick as yeah, well, yeah, yeah correct. Just to have something in there to create a little visual. Now when I'm in here, so when I run through this drill again, so I go into my setup, so you can see how the antenna is gonna move when I go pressure forward, so you can see how that would be my linear component, which is getting my pressure there. I'm holding the shoulder, gripping the ground, so now you can mm. see that that's moving on about a 45 degree angle where I'm controlling the ground. I'm lengthening the lead oblique and I'm starting to side bend on my trail side. So this would be my feel as I'm getting down into the impact zone via the separation that we want to create yeah. from the downswing. Can so you just, can you do one of those Trevor to this? Absolutely. Just like facing like that's your target just so absolutely. you can see on there? Absolutely. So from right in here, I would be in setup. I would go pressure forward. I'm gonna hold the lead shoulder and I'm gonna turn that right there. Yeah. So you can now see, here's where the pelvis is. Here's where my shoulders are. So you can see there's a alligator jaws right there that is, there's a differential in that. Yeah, and part, part of you, do, do that one more time here. Yep. What you guys wanna be able to, yeah, exactly, cue in on is how this hip and what you wanna feel, the alignment rod, the hip, are getting farther from the lead shoulder. Yep. That's the sensation you're feeling, like he's mentioning as the hip or pelvis separates from the rib cage, which separates from the shoulder on the way down. If you want to lead with the hips on the way down, that separation of those two is key. That's a really good visual there. Yeah, like we don't one. want we don't want these. Yeah, all at like once. if I held this up here, we don't want this all going at the same rate as each other. Yeah, I love that. And as you're doing that, Trevor, one of the things the key things because I've had players come in before and they say, well, Eric, when I do this, hey, I really get the club path kicking over the top or I'm getting some pulls and such with this. Yeah. And so I just want to add a little visual here as we're doing this, maybe to keep the club inside. Yeah, absolutely. As a little visual. So if you take your setup there, I'm going to put a little stick down the toe line. So if we use this down the toe line at about three o'clock, I would just say, guys, as you're doing this, Trevor, you can do a pose kind of down into a P6. Yep. As you guys are feeling this, you want to make sure that the shaft here, when you're doing this, you're separating the pelvis from the shoulder, right, up here. But back here, you're keeping that club set, uh, club head even with or inside your hands. Can you show us the bad version, Trevor? Absolutely. Where we get too far out. I, I see a lot of players initially trying to do this to increase the rotation. The shaft gets out. Really what you're looking for, one more time, is when you come down, this end of the stick here, you want to be as far away from this club head essentially as possible would be ideal now not everyone's going to be able to do that maximum right you're going to be somewhere in between the two yep but it show us the bad version no hip rotation the club out of two see these two these two get very close together now from there show the good see how much farther apart they are when we do that but just a little kind of add-on piece of when we're doing the drill keep the club head in absolutely inside as we're doing that absolutely yeah and that's where like you were saying that's the important piece of the separation in it yeah. That's where starting with the lead side of the pelvis versus starting with the hand, shoulder, and the pelvis at the same time, where these are now like basically matching each other. There's no, there's no separation in this right here. Yeah. And I like how you said with the pressure forward and doing the separating, that creates the side bend, which is a piece that keeps the club inside. Now, let's say, let's take your setup here one more time, Trevor. Let's say that we're going to hit um, a couple that like you're feeling this. Uh -huh. In terms of the players working through this, would you do kind of pose it? 
hit from that spot to start with? How, how would they start that process? Yeah, so for me, the first thing I'm gonna feel is what is it like to separate? Yep. Uh, so there would be there would be a separation feel because now I can take this up to the top and I'll tell you this is an important way I think of practicing this is like if you've struggled with this go up here we're up to the top we're going to keep the club head behind the right shoulder as you're turning the lead hip there mm. so you can see the club head is not pitching out in front of the shoulder to where these lines are now matching each other this line on my pelvis and the line on the shaft right there like you said we're getting this point further away from this point. Mm. Uh, so I think it's a really good, like standing in front of a mirror, filming yourself and going. Yeah, it's so good right there. Now when I'm down here, now we're in that spot that you had just talked about right there. Yep. And this is just bringing awareness to new muscle groups, new movements and new pressures that you're gonna feel in the golf swing. Learn how to move the right way before you try and implement all of this into hitting a shot. Totally. And I think w one quick point that I want to hop in and hit one or two. If you take your setup one more time, Trevor, the whole point of leading with the hips, right, to give you a, a sort of bigger reference point, at setup, it's zero, zero, yep. right? The race is even. The hips are not open at all. The shoulders are not open or closed at all. Yeah, let's go to the top of the backswing. Now, the top of the backswing, let's just say the hips are 45, right, turn, and the shoulders are 90. So the shoulders are already twice as much turned as the hips. Said differently, the hips already have a huge head start. Imagine you're racing your friend and you're both at the start line. You're already halfway there ahead of them. All we're trying to do to create the separation to lead more at the hips is imagine I'm holding your buddy back. I'm holding the shoulder yep. in the very early part of the downswing and the hip is just going to get a little bit more of a head start. That's really all we're looking to do there. Really? We're trying to win the race and just we're already way ahead. Just give yourself an additional little, you can relax there. Just give yourself an additional little head start in that early transition. I think it's a key point. Let me grab my glove and we'll hit one or two. All right, Trevor, let me try this bad boy here. Yep. I got the antenna in. I'm going to take my normal setup position. I'm just going to bring it about halfway back. Now I'm trying to feel, let me do a pose here first. Hold the shoulder in. Feel like the antenna separates from the shoulders. The pressure's forward. Yep. I'm going to feel the pelvis separate from the rib cage. The rib cage separate from the shoulder. And again, as you guys are doing this, there's going to be various levels of thoracic mobility, your ability to turn or rotate or not. I think all we're saying, Trevor, is like if we can have a sum increase relative to where we're at and not having everything move at the same time, that's going to be beneficial. That's the name of the game is not getting everything to move at the same time. Otherwise, the club and the hands and the arms are going to win. And that's going to be all of this. That's our steep, over the top, etc. Yeah. So as you're feeling this, guys, you're holding your lead shoulder and you're opening the pelvis with the pressure forward. That already feels to me like I'm going to have a big runway to get those arms inside. That feels easy for me to deliver that from inside. Let me do one more. I'm feeling the turning. So I'm feeling some cr right side crunching. I'm holding the shoulder in. Feeling I can see this with my shadow, getting as far away from my shoulder as possible. Okay, let me feel that same thing into here. Feel the club head staying just inside three o'clock as the pelvis is over there. That's about the look there, yeah? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna feel the same thing, getting this hip to separate from the shoulder. And that is about as solid as I can strike a golf ball there. That's how we do it. So that was pure, I mean, that was a seven iron into the wind, so it didn't go as far, but about as solid as I can hit. And those elements and getting that together, right, the goal is what we all want from there. Solid contact, exactly. consistent ball flight pattern, repeatable golf swing. So don't have everything move at one time, which we don't want to have. Yep. Let's have the pelvis lead. It's already way ahead. So we're just trying to give it a little bit of a head start uh, to start down. You do that via the separation. Hopefully these drills will help you, Trevor. That was killer. Awesome. As always, we might just film all of our damn videos together from here on out. <laughs> if you guys want to go see Trevor, we're going to put his link down below in person, online. He's got uh, YouTube, Instagram, all that very good. We'll also put GavornoGolf.com. Find a great coach to work with so we can help expedite your gains, uh, similar to like we did in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Any questions, always leave a comment down below.